Virgin Mary. Yeah. You can find online a free talk by Peter Kreeft on proofs of the existence of God. And it is the best talk that I've ever heard on this subject. And in this talk, he says that he knows of at least 24 good arguments for the existence of God. And he knows of only one good argument against the existence of God. And that is the problem of evil. If God exists, and we believe that he is all-knowing and all-good and all-powerful, how is it that evil exists in the world? The Catechism of the Catholic Church uh, addresses this problem in paragraph 309 and following, and it explains, uh, as the Church has understood since the times of St. Augustine, that God allows evil uh, only to bring a good or greater good from it. And we see that actually going on in today's first reading in the Acts of the Apostles. Because there is evil taking place, namely the persecution of God's faithful. We have the murder of St. Stephen and we have um, the imprisonment of other Christians, they're being pursued. It says that they were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Now, imagine if this took place, right? And uh, you found out basically at a moment's notice that you need to leave your home and, and go elsewhere. And you basically have time to take with you whatever you can carry in your hands. That's what was going on at this time. That's a great evil. That's great suffering that's being endured and death that's also taking place, again, as we see in the case of St. Stephen. So why is God allowing that for his first faithful that have believed the preaching of the apostles and the resurrection and that we are to love even our enemies? Why is God allowing that? Well, we uh, acknowledge that there is free will and God allows us to abuse this gift of free will and to choose to do evil, uh, but we cannot escape the plans of God because he will use it for a greater good. As we see here, the commentary explains. Behold how much good God can bring out of evil. How many conversions and how the church spread by means of this persecution. Thus the saying, crescit in adversis virtus. It is virtue grows in adversity. And so because of this persecution, the Christians had to leave. They spread out. And what is the Acts of the Apostles say, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. And so that's how new conversions, new believers, the church continues to grow. And of course, St. Stephen is now in heaven at this point, and he is interceding for the church. By his prayers, he's obtaining these conversions, and he's especially praying for Saul, isn't he? who consented to his murder. And he's praying that Saul will be converted and become the apostle to the Gentiles, which actually will take place. Now it says that they were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, but we know from Acts chapter 11 that it even goes farther than that. Acts 11 says, Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen... Remember, that was the reason why they were scattered, because of this persecution. Traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. And they continue to preach the word and to gather uh, a rich harvest for the church. And the commentary says, And so the efforts of the impious, which strive to impede the works of God, 
God actually uses to foster and accomplish his plans. That's how great God is, bringing good out of evil. This is why he permits it. So in our own times, in our own lives, if we ever question, right, if we ever doubt, you know, is God aware of this? What is he doing? What are his plans? We need to have faith and trust and always hope that God will bring a good out of whatever evils um, we have to endure in this life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.